The 2024 Duramax has got even better, pushing out more power, more torque, more towing capacity, and I'll tell you what I think as a diesel mechanic. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Alex. We have this 2024 second gen L5P Duramax with us, which I'm pretty excited about. Today, we are gonna focus on all the engine upgrades that GM has done to this Duramax to give it that extra power, torque, and towing capabilities. Lastly, we'll talk about where this newer second gen Duramax engine now sits in the HD pickup truck diesel market. In future videos, we'll also be doing some towing, some fuel economy testing, as well as talking about some things that I don't like about this second gen L5P Duramax and the truck in general. So look forward to those videos. The L5P Duramax platform made its debut in 2017. And in my opinion, it was the desperate change that GM needed. Previous generation Duramax, the LML Duramax that ran from 2011 to 2016. It was plagued with a couple critical issues. And well, this L5P Duramax when it came out did not disappoint. It had a brand new revamped fueling system, new emission system, and so far, I think it's very fair to say that most owners are very satisfied with this platform of engine. The first gen L5P was putting out 445 horsepower as well as 910 pound-feet of torque, perfectly adequate for the time, but in 2023, Ford went off the frickin' top ropes and dropped the high output power stroke, putting out 500 horsepower, and 1,200 pound-feet of torque. So, as we are in this seemingly arms race between these diesel engines, um, Duramax GM has responded by bumping up the power numbers in this second-gen L5P. This Duramax engine is now putting out 470 horsepower as well as 975 pound-feet of torque, as well as pushing the max towing numbers for these 2500s well above 20,000 pounds, all while maintaining the same engine size and configuration. The first major change with the second gen LP5 Duramax involves the high pressure fuel pump. This engine will have a peak injection pressure of 32,000 PSI. That's about 3,000 PSI more than the first gen. Um, it does seem like they're gonna continue to use the Denso HP4 high pressure fuel pump. I can't confirm that, but just by looking at pictures, it looks like it's the same pump. Um, Denso, the HP4 pump, has been used on this platform since 2017. It's a Japanese manufacturer, and so far, it seems to be a very, very good upgrade over the previous CP4 high-pressure fuel pump, which was a little bit disastrous. Now, along with that cranked up high pressure fuel pump, GM has also added reinforced um, high pressure fuel rails as well as updated injectors with slightly different nozzle patterns. The reason why higher pressure diesel injection is advantageous is because, well, the higher the pressure, the more atomization that you get and you just get a cleaner burn, essentially meaning that you can use less fuel to get the same result. The reason why diesel has to be atomized because it just doesn't really burn that well to begin with. Like, it literally puts the fire out. Try that with gasoline, it won't do the same thing, I can guarantee you that. The moral of the story is that higher injection pressures just mean you can have more atomization, which means you just have a more efficient burn, leading to more power and critically less emissions. The second major upgrade for this engine involves a new piston. Um, GM has gone for a much more aggressive, almost a racing style piston in these engines. Well, we brought a piston inside. This is from Detroit Diesel 15. And as Gail Banks describes very well, which I'll link his video down below, um, basically the reason why GM raises this cone, hopefully you guys can see, you know, it's a cone shape, but GM has raised this pretty significantly in the hopes of pushing air outwards as this piston comes up because as Gail Banks says, this area tends to be very lean. And so if you can push the air outward, you're gonna get a much more efficient, cleaner burn, which is gonna add more power as well as reducing emission or soot, which I think every engine manufacturer is looking to do right now. The cylinder heads on this engine will also be updated. Um, they have revised water jackets in them, which is supposed to help with cooling, heat dissipation. Once again, um, ideally helping with just the efficiency of the engine. 
This engine will also come with updated cylinder head gaskets. GM has beefed them up and it kind of makes sense because while the fueling pressure has increased, there are different pistons on here, which could lead to increased combustion chamber pressures. Um, so I like that they've beefed up the cylinder head gaskets. Another new feature is, well, the turbocharger. You guys can see the VGT actuator right there. This turbocharger comes with a slightly bigger turbine housing, which you can kind of see, um, as well as a slightly different blade setup. It comes with one less blade on the exhaust side to ideally let more exhaust gas pass while still being able to maintain the same horsepower rating out of the turbo. Without a doubt, the biggest improvement is this updated VGT actuator. GM claims that this new VGT actuator will be able to control the turbo speed much quicker. This is gonna to lead to increased um, throttle response, better fuel economy, lower emissions, and overall more power. A VGT, or in this case, an electronic variable geometry turbo, Essentially, what that does is it allows a turbo to act like a small turbo as well as a large turbo all in one package. You wanna get this truck moving quickly with minimum turbo lag. You want this turbo to be able to spool up very quickly. However, when you got a big load behind you and you're already at speed going up a hill, you wanna develop a lot more boost. So a VGT turbo can allow a single turbo to kind of do both very well. And the quicker the actuator is, the better throttle response you're gonna have, the better performance you're gonna have. Another thing that I really like to see that GM has done with this engine is improved the exhaust brake. I know for a fact when I towed with this Duramax with the load behind it, I was really not that impressed with the exhaust brake in comparison to first of all, the power stroke, which I thought was okay and the 6.7 Cummins, which was the best by far. Um, so GM has recognized that they need to improve their exhaust brake and they have done so with this engine and just kind of driving around town here, it definitely does feel a little bit more aggressive responsive than the previous L5P Duramaxes. So for this engine setup, the VGT Turbo actually provides the exhaust braking. And well, if there's too much exhaust back pressure, what can happen is the exhaust valves will actually start to float. And so what GM has done with this engine is they have actually stiffened up the exhaust valve springs about 20% stiffer, meaning that this VGT turbo can provide more exhaust back pressure, meaning a stronger exhaust brake, which this engine, in my opinion, really needed. Another nice increase is towing capacity. The 2023 Crew Cab 4x4 Duramax could tow a maximum of 18,500 pounds. This truck, this configuration 4x4 crew cab can tow 21,600 pounds, which is over a 3,000 pound towing increase. Pretty significant if I do say so myself, and I'm really excited to get a load behind this truck and see how it handles on my towing course. So those are the major mechanical differences between the first gen and the second gen L5P Duramax that are helping to give this engine a little bit more power. Although I can almost guarantee GM has tuned this engine differently, which probably is also helping to add a little bit more power as well. No handle, a button. Ugh, I don't like that. The bottom ends on the second gen L5Ps did not change at all, which is no surprise. They were already very strong. Um, cast iron, deep skirted block, cross bolted mains, forged crankshaft, forged connecting rods, um, fractured journal caps. So basically as strong as she's gonna get. And so GM probably figured there was no need to change the bottom ends because they were already nice and beefy. These Duramaxes have always been quick engines in my opinion. And while this updated L5P is no exception. Woo! She's got a little bit of power behind her. And according to Motor Trend, this thing weighs 8,300 pounds. She's a heavy beast, but it'll go zero to 60 miles an hour in 6.2 seconds, which again, these things are not race cars, but that is pretty darn quick. I believe the Ford Power Stroke will do it in 6.1 because, uh, well, that Power Stroke's a little bit of a beast, but these Duramaxes can confirm they are still pretty quick little engines. Now, finally, where does this updated Duramax engine put these um, GM HD trucks in the HD truck segment? First of all, I can say that the 2024 GMC HD trucks are probably the best looking trucks in the segment at the moment. 
Let me know what you guys think about that, uh, that hot take. I do still think that Ford um, takes the crown with their high output um, power stroke in terms of performance. The fact that you can get a high output power stroke in a 2500 is pretty incredible. I also do like the fact that you still get a solid front axle with the Ford Super Duties. In terms of like interior and ride quality, I think GM takes the cake here with their 2024 HD trucks. Pretty awesome inside these things. And I mean, to be honest, I, I, I've always liked the L5P Duramax. I think it was a massive upgrade over the LML. And to be honest, I think that engine really did hurt the Duramax name. Now you might be saying, what about the Ram 2500s? And in my opinion, I just feel like that platform is really not that competitive anymore. I mean, you guys know I love the Cummins engine. I think it's a great engine, but with the second gen L5P Duramax with again, it's increased power numbers, it has really left Ram 2500 diesel Cummins engine on a little bit of an island. The 2024 Ram 2500 puts out 370 horsepower as well as 850 pound-feet of torque with that rather subpar six-speed transmission. So when the competition, like this truck right here, is putting out 100 more horsepower as well as well over 100 more pound-feet of torque, it starts to make that platform just look a little outdated. I mean, you can get an F-250 with the high output power stroke and that's gonna put out 350 more pound-feet of torque than that Cummins, which is a lot more power. I can hear you guys screaming at me already. So two things, yes, Cummins does have a high output engine, but you can only get it in the 3500 platform, which to me is just ridiculous. Um, secondly, yes, the Cummins may have an argument in terms of strength, reliability, and longevity, but I mean, the 6.7 Power Stroke is a very good engine. It's been around for a number of years and has proven itself to be a very, very capable, long-lasting, reliable engine. And this engine right here, the L5P, like I have mentioned many times in this video, I think is a very, very stout engine. So it's not like you're gonna get an unreliable engine if you don't buy a Cummins. All I'm saying is that Ram may need to shake some things up in the years to come here to remain as competitive as they once were. So those are the updates for the second gen L5P 2024 Duramax. Let me know what you think. Would you guys plan on buying something like this? Does it intrigue you? Always interested to hear what you guys have to say. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And hopefully <laughs> the weather gets better. We'll have some cool stuff planned in the future, but enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.